The eruption of Mount St. Helens has captivated me ever since I was little. It's insane that before the mountain erupted, it looked like this, and after, well, it looked like this. Some 4,000 feet of rock was sheared off the mountain when it erupted. There's so much to learn about geology, seismology, and geography when it comes to Mount St. Helens, so I thought, what would it look like to add this volcano to my game? Let's find out. First, I need to get a model of Mount St. Helens imported into Roblox. And to do that, I used the website heightmap.skydark.pl to get the satellite imagery for Mount St. Helens, as well as the height map that I will import into Blender to make a model. But that's not all I need. I need the height map and satellite imagery for a mountain that looks like Mount St. Helens before it erupted, namely Mount Jefferson, which is located nearby Mount St. Helens in Oregon. So now I have those files and I can import it to Blender. I'll show you that now. Okay, so now that we're in Blender, we can go to Add Mesh Plane, go into Edit Mode and subdivide the plane until we get about 32,000 triangles. Uh, the limit for Roblox is 20,000, but this will be okay because Roblox can um, downsample it pretty easily. Uh, we're gonna go ahead now and add our modifier, uh, displace, then add a texture, which is going to be our height map. Let me locate that on my desktop here. Aha, there we go, height map for Mount St. Helens. All right, so now we see it displaces it. We can change the scale of that displacement however we want. Ooh, ooh. That looks about right, I think. Uh, so yeah, now we have displacement for Mount St. Helens. Uh, let me adjust that a little bit more. I think that looks a bit more reasonable. Now we have to add our material as an image um, right here, uh, image overlay, and find our satellite imagery for Mount St. Helens. And it won't show up right away. We have to change our view setting. And there we go. You can also look at the lighting in Blender. And now we can export it as a .fbx, rename it here, and there we go. So we can import that model into Roblox now. Um, and then we're going to do the same thing for Mount Jefferson. So I'll real quick speed through that. Okay, now we're in Roblox Studio and we can import our Mount St. Helens model from Blender and we can resize the model to make it miniature as we're making a miniature volcano in this session right here. Um, change that to anchor it equals true, otherwise it'll fall out of the world. Now we're importing uh, Mount Jefferson from Blender just like before. And naming it correctly and we have to resize it to be miniature like Mount St. Helens. Now we have the two models side by side. The object here is to place the pre-May 1980 Mount St. Helens model on top of the post-May 1980 Mount St. Helens model. Mount Jefferson is serving as the pre-May 1980 model. So we're gonna put them inside of each other just like that. So when the eruption occurs, we can switch the models. 
you'll see how that goes um, in a minute here. Now we're gonna insert a part into the workspace. This is for emitting the lava particle, particle effects for our eruption. We're gonna name it Lava Emitter. And we're going to change specifically the orientation of that part so that the lava particles spew out at an angle, just like the real Mount St. Helens eruption. So we're going to find that it affects um, particle emitter and the default particles are sparkles so we'll change that we'll change that to this different texture which looks a little bit more like fire or lava spewing you can see that here we're going to change some settings for the effect of the lava um, we'll have the lifetime be just five seconds even the rate at which the lava comes out we want that to be a hundred we want it to be that to be a lot a lot of particle particle effects coming out in a short period of time um, we we'll want to have random rotation associated with them so we'll change that here and the speed at which they come out so you can see that affects the rate of the particles coming out a little bit more uh, and adding spread to those par particle effects on the X and the Y axis. Here what we're doing is we're making the lava be affected by gravity essentially. Just the particles will go up at an angle and then be pulled towards the ground. Uh, we'll make them glow like lava here. And uh, we'll change the acceleration a little bit more towards the ground. Let's see if we can experiment with that. That's negative 100. This is positive 10. So it particle effects are being pulled up towards the sky but what we want is probably about negative 15 for the value of the acceleration and make it look sort of like it's slow motion like it's a bigger object than it really is we're also going to move that particle emitter brick into the center uh, right above where the eruption is occurring in our modern day Mount St. Helens model and make the transparency one so you can't see the actual brick sort of part of the effect now we're going to insert another part this one is going to be to admit all the other effects um, these ones will not be on an angle that is why it's a separate part from the lava emitter make the transparency one change the size of it to be pretty small doesn't doesn't really matter exactly what size it is roughly a square or, or a cube we'll add smoke to that initially it's white and a little bit translucent we'll have to change that in the opacity settings to more of a thick opaque smoke um, the size is a little bit too big so we'll change that to the time scale and size and the color to more of a dark gray ash color and that you can see the sun shining through the ash the volcano erupting there place this effect emitter inside of our volcano model and insert our shockwave decal effect so as you can see as we change the size of the mesh of this decal we'll also make it uh, visible that it looks kind of like a, a shockwave going out this will be dynamically resized when we do our scripting for the eruption but for now let's just place it at the center of our model so we know where the effect needs to start off so it has a top and a bottom. We'll move that to the center of our model. So we have smoke, shockwave, and lava effects, all three. With the fourth effect we're going to add being an explosion. So we'll tidy that up. We'll just create a folder for those effects to be referenced to within our scripts. You'll see that in a minute when we actually reference all these effects in our script to make the eruption happen but for now 
we'll leave all of those effects disabled until the eruption actually occurs. Um, next, we've got to think about our sound. So we need some sort of rumbling, rumbling eruption sound for our model. Maybe an earthquake. Um, this is all within Roblox's toolbox. Free sounds available to anyone, courtesy of the people who made them. We'll rename it to eruption. Eruption sound, rather. So it's easier to reference in our code, as you'll see later. And the model is just about ready. I create a local script and declare a function for the eruption of the volcano. We also have to make references to the lava effects and the actual model for our volcano. We'll call that Helen's. And the first part of our eruption is the smoke or the ash. So we're going to essentially copy and paste the smoke from the effects folder, copy, and paste it into the effect emitter and enable it. That's the first part of the eruption, as you can see here. So that first line, new, new mega smoke, that's copy. And this is to paste, this is paste. You make the, the parent of the smoke to be the effect emitter, enable it, and also enable the lava as you see here. And so once the lava is enabled, it'll start flowing out just like this. It's like the particles we made earlier in the video. Now we want to play the eruption sound. So we'll make reference to it and play it. And now it's time to make our shockwave go out. So we'll create a function for the shockwave and call it. Also, this is here we're going to have our first camera shake. We're using Slight Nix Camera Shaker. I'll put the GitHub page right here on, on screen. It just allows you to do simple camera shakes without much hassle. Great, great module. So we're just calling it here and using it to shake once with an explosion preset right before the shockwave actually starts to go out. Now for the shockwave, we make a reference to a new shockwave. Basically, we're going to copy that from the effects folder. We, we copy it, we clone it. We set the transparency of the decals to zero so that they're visible. And we set the parent of the shockwave to the volcano model. We want to make a reference to the mesh within the shockwave so we can easily resize it. We're going to resize it using between, which is just a fancy way of saying an animation to make the shockwave radiate out, just like you'd see in an explosion or atomic bomb or something like that. We have to define the information for the tween, how we want it to behave, the duration, and also the goal of how big we want it to end up at the end of the animation. So we use tween service colon create and enter in our parameters for the tween. And we play that animation down here. We wait for it to be completed and then we destroy the new shockwave because it's over, we don't need it anymore. We're gonna call that function within a coroutine so that we have multi-threading and it can run alongside other functions. You'll see that explosion result right here. Now we wanted to create additional explosions to create even greater effect. So I'm gonna make a create explosion function with a parameter of time scale, so we can easily create multiple explosions, but that have slightly different effects. And we'll call that function multiple times with different parameters to make sort of a slow motion or greater size effect to the explosions. Once we call that function a few times with different parameters, we make the camera shake with a sustained shake this time. Now with the earthquake effect, and we then swap out the old Mount St. Helens model with the new one while the eruption occurs. With a few more tweaks, the end result was hopefully worth the wait. Thanks for learning, and thanks for watching.